Pass Go, do not collect $200. Go directly to the sensor edge. <laughs> Hello there, everyone. Welcome to episode number 657 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. This week, my guest is EMAS CEO Mark Gorenson. Mark and I are chatting all about the biggest challenges of Edge AI development today, the details of the EMAS SDK, and we also chat all about the EMAS ECS DOT, their ultra low power Edge AI SOC. So, without further ado, please welcome Mark to Fish Fry. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. Nice being here with you. Excellent. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, what is EMAS all about? So EMAS is a small startup company. We're basically a fabulous company, and we've actually thought through a different way to solve artificial intelligence at the edge. And what that basically means is at the far edge of sitting right at the sensor level where the data is being uh, captured. So whether it's a camera or audio or any kind of environmental sensor, we actually pick up that sensor input, run it through the artificial intelligence model and uh, come up with the anomaly or come up with what is being viewed as a problem and then come up with a solution set or analysis to determine what is the best course of action. Now, the interesting part about this is, is this technology is very low latent, meaning it's instantaneous. We don't have to go to the cloud for any kind of information. But more importantly is we actually can run on a coin cell battery for weeks or months or years on end, depending on what kind of analysis or pinging is being done on the sensor level. So we actually looked at the problem from a different level. Our competitors actually bolt AI onto existing processors, most notably probably ARM or RISC type processor. And we actually looked at the problem from a wholesale problem, looking at the sensor level input and figuring out how to minimize any bit of power usage and also any kind of latency. So um, our decision making is very quick. And what this means is we can actually run for um, weeks or months on end where our competitors are only just a few days um, because our low power usage, we can basically run this processor for less power than what's being used to blink the little LED light. And again, we don't have to access the cloud for any kind of information. We have everything resident on the chip itself. So we're a single element that can run on a coin cell battery and requires no connection to the cloud for analysis. All right. So what do you think are the biggest challenges facing edge AI devices today? So that's a perfect question. And so that's exactly why we engineered the processor as we did. So the biggest challenge we have is power budgets, meaning how long your battery lasts. And just about everybody can relate to this because whether it's a ring it's measuring your health or vital statistics, whether it's your watch, Apple Watch, Garmin Watch, et cetera, any of these kind of watches or any kind of wearables, the biggest challenge we have is that they need to be put on a charger almost every couple of days. And so we can now take our processor, put it in those same devices, and we can go for weeks or months on end without having to go onto a charger. So that's an easy example that most people can understand. Next is latency and reliability. Since we don't have to access the cloud, we can actually process all the information at hand so we can give instantaneous feedback to any kind of input that we're seeing. And this also is key for any kind of security. So imagine if you will, that everything that you need is on this little chip and you don't have to go to the cloud for any kind of passwords or whatever. It can actually look at your biometrics and allow you to access certain things, whether it's door locks, whether it's PCs or et cetera. We can actually be a big part of security for just about anything. 
And then last but not least is artificial intelligence requires a lot of data and a lot of information. So we actually have four meg worth of memory put on our device and compress artificial intelligence down to two bits, meaning we can put very complex models onto our chip and uh, do all of the work on compressing and decompressing on the chip. And so you know, we actually looked at how to do very smart power gating, how to only turn on certain parts of the chip when we absolutely have to, and then have all of the necessary parts of data making right on the chip itself so we don't have to have any kind of latent communication to the cloud or any kind of other thing that would take up power and or consume latency. So how does EMAS help solve these issues? So the biggest way how we do it is by smart power gating. We actually only turn on the chip when we absolutely need to. So imagine if you have these sensors operating, um, whether it's a security system or a system that's monitoring uh, predictive maintenance, we can actually just sit there and look at what's happening on the piece of equipment or the room look at all the different data sets. And so for a security camera, we would actually just see if there's any kind of glass breakage, if there's any kind of unusual movement, people we don't know that should be there. And the chip will just sit there and just monitor everything and only flag if there's an issue. And the same thing on predictive maintenance. We can sit there on a machine, monitor all of the input parameters from the machine. And then as long as everything's running a okay meaning that there's no vibration no temperature problems no unusual current draw the chip will just sit there using very little power down to almost nothing and then only when there's a problem we'll actually send information say hey houston we have a problem we need to have something here and so we can go into anything from agriculture fields monitoring moisture in the field what kind of fertilizers there what kind of humidity is there just by using a little solar cell to be able to access that information. So imagine, if you will, security cameras that can go anywhere. Analysis for any kind of farm animals or farm fields can go just about anywhere. We can go on any kind of pump or piece of equipment and just monitor it as there's a problem. And one of the other exciting um, applications that we've tested is drones. We actually can modify parameters within a drone and now can make drone flight twice as long as what they currently have, just because we can sense all of the environmental factors that a drone's in, optimize the angles and speeds and whatnot to ensure that the drone is operating at maximum efficiency. So, you know, there's just a number of problems that, you know, we can solve with our low power usage, our great sensory input, and then uh, not having to access the cloud for any kind of key information. So walk me through the SDK. What is all included? So that's actually kind of what we looked at to ensure that we could be uh, viable instantly because we're seeing that, you know, people get kind of wrapped around the axle, if you will, about, wow, artificial intelligence, this seems very complex. I don't understand artificial intelligence. I don't really understand how I could use this. So we actually wanted our software development kit to act like a welcome mat, not a lock gate. So we basically have a compiler and a tool chain for our chip that's based on the RISC-V architecture. We've come up with pre-optimized AI kernels for vision, audio, and sensor fusion workloads, meaning that people don't have to come up with their own AI kernels. And then we also have a number of compression tools that anybody can take sensor flow, PyTorch, or CAFE models and shrink them to fit comfortably on our chip. So pretty much just about any development person probably knows TensorFlow, PyTorch, or CAFE. And then we also have a simulator and power profiler so that they can see exactly what kind of latency and energy savings we can give them before they even touch any hardware. So imagine if someone wants to say, you know, I got to test these guys to see if they're the real deal. They can put their AI models um, right on our chip. We have a gate, if you will, that they can come on the internet and download their software right onto our chip. It's a really cool portal. 
and then they can do all of their benchmark testing to be able to test their application. And then we also have a number of reference applications that we've already developed for people, like keyword spotting, for instance, you know, when anybody says Alexa or Siri, they automatically get a tool set. And so we have that on our chip where they can use any kind of keywords and then the chip will uh, wake up and do whatever they want. We also have anomaly detection. So with all of our sensors that we look at, our chip is really optimized for any kind of anomalous processing. So if you will, you know, like I talked about on the burglar alarm where anything that is not normal, the chip will flag. Machine maintenance, any kind of parameter on a tool or machine that is out of whack. We already have the software developed that people can be able to utilize and get a very fast start. So whether they're a researcher or a product engineer, they can get actual meaningful results in days instead of having to come up the learning curve and come up with a new chip, architecture, and software, et cetera. And so we've tried to make it very easy for people to utilize our chip. So if my audience wants to get started using the ECS DOT, where would you suggest they get started? So we have a website that they can get onto to get all of the information on the architecture and we have a white paper and all of the details to be able to get on our online portal. We also have the developer kit, which they can get a board sensors to be able to run their own models, which is really good for prototyping. And then, like I said, we have a number of tool sets and software already developed so they can get onto our virtual software development environment and be able to work on their applications and see how they can utilize our chip in the real world. Fantastic. All right. It's time for your off the cuff question. So Mark, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? So for me, I grew up in New Mexico and I'm really fond of red and green chili. So I would choose a mixture of red and green chili cheese enchiladas with uh, egg over easy on the top. <laughs> Nice. That sounds so good. All right. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks a lot, Amelia. It was really nice talking with you and uh, looking forward to future conversations. Well, folks, that's all I've got for this week's Fish Fry. But we have some exciting interviews coming up in the next few months, including my discussion about the future of micromanufacturing with Scrona CEO, Dr. Patrick Heisler. My chat with Graham Dudgeon from MathWorks about the future of eVTOL battery design and my discussion about the democratization of AI network infrastructure with Upscale AI CEO Barun Carr and a whole lot more. <laughs> hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, you can follow us on LinkedIn. <laughs> and we also have a Blue Sky social channel and are on Mastodon, too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, -E at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of November 7th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.